Hi, I'm Travis. I'm Nancy. I'm Linda. I'm Marcus. And we will be presenting on the Waste Management Company. Waste Management, based in Houston, Texas, is the world's largest waste services company. It is a company that provides services for waste, recyclables, yard debris, and hazardous material collections. Waste Management began cooking their accounting books during 1992 to 1997. Due to the company's revenues and profits not growing fast enough to meet their targets, management began inflating earnings. They refused to record expenses necessary to write off costs of unsuccessful and abandoned landfill development projects. They augmented the time length for their property, plant, and equipment by inflating the salvage values of their trucks and extending their useful lives. Management had done this to retain executive positions, acquire substantial base bonuses, and for some, enhance retirement benefits. In doing so, waste management inflated their after-tax profits by $1.7 billion. So, who were the main people involved? Buntrock was the founder and CEO and was the driving force behind the fraud. He set earnings targets, fostered a culture of aggressive accounting, personally directed certain accounting changes to meet the targeted earnings, and was the spokesperson who announced the company's fake altered numbers. And then there was Rooney, the president and COO, he ensured that required write-offs were not recorded and, in some instances, overruled accounting decisions that would have had a negative impact on operations. Cohen was a CFO and had primary responsibility for executing the scheme. He also ordered, ordered the destruction of damaging evidence, misled the company's audit committee and internal accountants, and withheld information from the outside auditors. Hal was the CAO and was the accounting expert who, among other things, devised many one-off accounting manipulations to deliver the targeted earnings and carefully crafted the deceptive disclosures. Tobexon, another accounting expert, was enlisted in 1994 to handle Hal's overflow, and Getz, the general counsel, blessed the company's fraudulent disclosures. The auditing firm that was involved was Arthur Anderson LLP. They audited Waste Management's annual financial statements since before the company went public in 1971 until 2002. Until 1997, every CFO and CAO in the Waste Management history as a public company had previously worked as an auditor at AA. Management kept Anderson's audit fees and advised Anderson that, for, that the firm could earn additional fees through special work. Anderson annually presented company management called Proposed Adjusting Journal Entries to correct errors that understated expenses and overstated earnings in the company's financial statements, but management refused. They instead struck a deal with Anderson. The resulting action steps agreement consisted of two components. First, to eliminate the prior period misstatements that Anderson had stated as Proposed Adjusting Journal Entries, top management agreed to write off between 165 and 205 million misstatements over periods of up to 10 years, spreading the write-offs over a decade in practice in violation of GAAP. Arthur Anderson repeatedly issued unqualified audit reports on the company's materially false and misleading annual financial statements. How they got caught. The new CEO ordered a review of the company's accounting practices and this led to a review of financial statements during 1992 through the third quarter of 1997. After restating the financial statements, it became to the company's attention that the financial statements had misstated its pre-tax earnings by approximately $1.7 billion. Who was affected? Waste management shareholders, other than the defendants who sold the company stock and thus avoided losses, lost over $6 billion in the market value of their investments. This led to a major drop in stock price by 33%. How much did each member of management exactly profit throughout the scandal? Buntrock, almost $17 million. Rooney, $9.3 million. Cohen, $900,000. Howe, $600,000. Getz and Tobexen, almost or around $400,000. And finally, what was their punishment? Prison? No. Waste management did not admit of their actions or any wrongdoing. Waste Management settles a shareholder class action suit for $457 million, and SEC fined Arthur Anderson $7 million. And to prevent future frauds, the new CEO of the company set up an anonymous company hotline for employees to report dishonest or improper behavior.
created using Powtoon.